And the thirteenth verse. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark, go for wood. And you know the story there. And he said, And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, uh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. I want to use for my text, and you just writing it down, you've got three things here to write. Uh, before the storm, in the storm, and after the storm. Before the storm, in the storm, and after the storm, then the rainbow of hope. Father, thank you for the word of God, the truth. We trust you, Lord, to bless it in your own way tonight. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I've always been a curious fellow. I, if something won't work, I want to know why. If uh, we're not having revival, I want to know why. Praise the Lord. And I don't know of anybody that really knows the whole answer to that, but Jesus. He knows every church's weakness. He knows how much we love one another. He knows if we're lukewarm. There's not a thing you don't know. So why not go to him and say, Lord, well, I need a revival at my house, and uh, would you help us? Let me bring you briefly across three things to let you understand what I'm driving at here before the storm. The Bible tells us about a certain rich man and his crops brought, brought forth abundantly that year. The sun was shining, no doubt, beautifully that day. He perhaps walked around on the hills and looked at his barns and he looked at the large crops, been a good crop year. And he said, I'm gonna have to do some figuring here. And I don't know, it could have been a clear, beautiful sunset. He didn't have any fear of bad health. He's a well, healthy man, seemingly. No signs of a heart attack. I can see him in my mind as he goes into his office in his beautiful home, sets down with his pencil and some paper to begin to make some blueprints of some of the largest barns in the whole country. I don't know, he may have said, I want this one to be 200 feet long and 100 feet wide two stories high and this one over here a certain size and that one and he's going on and on and he finally said I've got much laid up for many years and he said I can say to my soul you've got goods laid up that'll last you many years now rest and enjoy life he was approaching the storm, but he didn't know it. Not a pain. His bank account was in good shape. The doctor may have given him a good uh, examination, said, man, you're in good shape. Living like you are, you'll live many years. This was before the storm. But while he was sitting there, a dark cloud settled down. The death angel came and walked right in to that beautiful home, into that beautiful office, looking at 
Once the very healthy man, square in the eye, at Old Isle Pool, this night, this night, you're going to die. It's all over. You'll never build those barns. And so his storm came. He entered the storm, but he never came out of it alive. He died. They perhaps found him the next morning sitting in his easy chair with his pencil and his paper and some of his drawings. Gone. That's a, a man that didn't prepare for the storm that was coming. Us preachers are always warning people, the sun may be shining today, but it may not shine tomorrow. You may be healthy today, but you may not be healthy tomorrow. It pays, my dad used to tell me, to cut hay while the sun is shining. While the sun is shining, while the old heart's beating away, and you're feeling all right, that's the time to get right. I see another man in the Bible in his storm, and he was a great man. He was God's best at that time. His name was Elijah, and he was in the middle of a raging storm that Jezebel started. And here we see this man running in his storm, and we see this man doubting in his storm. He felt he was the only one left. God said, you're all wrong, there's 7,000. And he prayed to God to die. And, but there's some marvelous things can go on in a storm. While he was running and doubting, lying under the juniper tree, sleeping and finally sleeping in the storm, an angel came and tapped him on the shoulder. Isn't he a good God? When we know we're not worth a dime, he'll send the angel, tap us on the shoulder and wake us up and say, look, see that cake there? And the old boy was so dead tired from running, I guess he ate and went back to sleep. Angel had to wake him up the second time and get him to eat. But you know the Lord works in the storm. Don't ever forget that. Here was a prophet in the storm running. He felt that God was a million miles away. But angels were all around him. And the Lord said, I want you to go over and stand over there by that mountain. And he went over there. And sure enough, there really came a natural storm. There's two kinds we're talking about tonight. Natural storms, spiritual storms. And the spiritual storm that God sends, he can end it any time he wants to and will. But Satan started one 6,000 years ago and it's still raging. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And if you follow him, you'll be in a storm forever and ever. Because no one gets out of his storm unless they walk into the presence of Jesus. Now the Lord sent this terrible storm, and it blew. And man, it was terrible. I can see Elijah standing there shaking in his boots, and the Lord was not in that wind. And then he sent an earthquake, shaking the ground, rocks falling everywhere. But he still didn't hear Nothing but noise. Rocks rolling. Then a terrible fire swept through, just burning everything down. 
but he wasn't in the fire. Here's the old thundering prophet that would have looked for him in the earthquake, looked for him in the storm, or looked for him in the fire. But all of a sudden, he, when he passed, he, he heard a still, small voice. Still, small voice speaking to him. You know, the Lord... When he said, let there be light, he didn't have to shout till it shook the star. Just, it wouldn't have mattered if he'd have said it loud, low, or whispered it. If he'd have said, let there be light, there was light. Let there be suns, moons, and stars came into being. Because we get to shouting and thinking our emotions and Things like that really gets the job done. It really sometimes don't get nothing done. Because I have met some people so demon-possessed, you better talk low. And you better talk faith. And you better know your authority. And you better trust the power of the Lord and not yours. And just a whisper sometimes can move devils and make them flee. And the still small voice spoke. And when the Lord got through with him, he sent him to anoint a king. And he went on the strength of that cake 40 days. Pretty good cake. That was a real angel food cake. Well, I didn't need anything else to eat for 40 days, brother. That's all right. Now, you talk about a cake that was probably a good diet. You think of that. You go on the strength of that 40 days. I don't believe it fattened him. I think, if, if anything, he may have lost a little if he was a little overweight. But he had that vim and vigor and strength to go 40 days. Praise the Lord. So here's a man... In the storm, running, discouraged, asleep. But the Lord and his angels were there. Don't forget it. When you're in the storm and the storm clouds are raging, he's there. <laughs> then after the storm, I'm giving you these three thoughts to let you know where I'm going. After the storm. <clears throat> It's a very dangerous time. Here the prophet of God, before the storm, got a direct special message from God. How to go, what to do, and how to come back. And he went. And the storm broke. And if the Lord hadn't have been with him, the king would have killed him. He reached out for the man. And when a king so angry, he reaches for a man. Everybody else reaches for the sword. Head and limbs that have been rolling in a little bit. But when the king reached out, the Lord smote his arm and it withered and fell down. And the king realized he was up against the power of God. And he called on the man of God. And the man of God spoke and his arm was restored. He did his wonderful work after the storm. He started home. But there's always a false prophet. I want to tell you there's a lot of folks can prophesy more in a day than Isaiah did in a lifetime. And none of it ever come to pass, but it sounds good. There was an old lying prophet told him, said, look, an angel visited me and told me to tell you to come by and eat. You could go back home this way. And so because he was a prophet, had been, but now he's a false prophet, a lying prophet, because he knew he was lying. And the man came. And when he started home after the storm, 
the lion slew him and didn't eat him. Just stood by him until they came, picked him up, carried him away to bury him. So before the storm, there's some things to do. And don't lose your faith in the storm. And don't get careless after the storm. Because when the storm's all past and everything is all wonderful and great, the word is still the word. And it don't change. The path he sent you down when you got the Holy Ghost, you better still be walking it. Praise the Lord. Now, before the storm, I mentioned different kinds of storm. There's natural. We know all about them. I was reared on the farm. I know something about both kinds. And I remember in the springtime when we was planting and, and in the fall when we were harvesting, and I would watch mom as she would can blackberries, huckleberries, anything in the world. Put, we were putting corn in the crib and potatoes under the straw and everything. Getting the hogs all fattened up in the calves. I said, Dad, why don't we work all the time? He said, winter's coming, son. Winter's coming. And he said, we want to be ready when winter comes. You see, that's uh, preparing before winter. And if people don't learn how to prepare before winter, they'll suffer during those cold, snowy days. They're going to suffer. But I'm looking at a, another storm here. The Lord said to Noah, He said, Noah, I'm going to destroy all these people now. All these people except eight. This is before the storm, before the flood. They were eating, Jesus said, and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. They didn't know they was in one of hell's greatest storms. The sun was shining. The food was on the table. And money in the bank. But the old Andalusian world was in a spiritual storm caused by hell. And they had become so immoral and so full of sin and perversion until God said, I can't stand it anymore. I'm going to wipe them off the face of the earth. And he said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. I've said it before. If it hadn't been for a preacher, you wouldn't have been here to argue about anything. Because Noah was the only preacher on earth God found. And he called him and he told him to build a boat. And he told him all the dimensions. Told him where to put the door. And where to put the window. And pitch on the inside and pitch on the outside. And Noah built it exactly as God said build it. And then the storm came, the flood came. And while the rest of them were running for a hiding place from the terrible flood, this was one of the worst that had ever come upon the world. It covered the whole earth. The Bible said it rained 40 days and 40 nights. Just a water spout pouring from heaven and the earth breaking and gushing up from the earth until finally there was not anything left. No one left alive but God's church. In God's ship, they went through the one door. Even as God said, and when they went through that door, they were safe when God shut the door. I want you to know there's a door wide open today. Behold, he said, I set before you an open door. God's church door is open. I used to hear him say when I, where I went to church, we're going to open the doors of the church. 
But I got to read in my Bible, it said they don't ever close. They stay open. And it's going to stay open until the trumpet sounds. And the church is translated. The door is wide open. That door was open until the flood came. And then it was too late. But Noah was preparing while the sun was shining, year in and year out. He worked while it was day because he knew that night was coming when he couldn't work anymore. If he was going to save his family, he had to work while it was day. That's why you come to church day in and day out. I was looking through our old church album. Showed it to Brother Trammell. Half of them nearly in there is dead. I saw the great crowd out in front of the church there. I picked it up with a magnifying glass. And I think I counted over 40. And that first picture took out there was some 200. They've gone on to be with the Lord. But there were some in that picture that didn't. They didn't prepare while the sun was shining. They didn't prepare before their storm came. And they went out in eternity lost forever and ever. Us preachers have preached to hundreds. I've watched them walk in the church and sit down. Looked like they were in good health. And some of them were because they died in accidents. I've watched them within three days be in the funeral home when an altar call was given. Oh, yes, my friend. The altar call was given. And sometime it went a little long. And we sang again and we, again and we pleaded and we pleaded. Why? I didn't know, but I knew the Spirit wouldn't let it go. He knew there was somebody there that would never come back. Somebody there that would never be saved. Somebody would die in three days. God help us. Noah was preparing an ark while the world eat, drank, and was merry. Now, in the storm, before the storm, now in the storm, only those in the ark were saved. One ark, and one last storm for this crowd. God's storms, as I said, will pass. And Nature's storms pass. They said over here when this tornado hit Shreveport, some of them was in the building, they said it was gone in seconds. It hit and it was gone in seconds. Some storms come and go fast. Some, the great hurricanes, last some time for days. But there's one thing you know. Natural storms will always finally pass. And the sun's going to shine if you just be patient and wait. But I've watched people walk the floor during these storms because they didn't know whether the house would be there when it was over or not. I remember Brother B.E. Eccles used to tell about his grandfather. I mean his father, old Grandpa Eccles, one of the prayingest men I ever knew. He said one day they looked out and there was a tornado coming, tearing up everything. He said he didn't believe. He said if there's ever anything, he, he, he'd never be Pentecostal. But he said his daddy prayed a little bit and then started shouting. He said from one end of the house to the other he shouted. 
And he said, has dad gone crazy? A cyclone coming and here he is shouting. The cyclone came pretty close to the house and then leaped over the house, went on tearing down trees everywhere. He said, that convinced me. My old daddy was in touch with the God that ruled the universe. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He was out thumbing a ride one day and uh, to town. The fella stopped, picked him up. And, of course, Brother Eccles always carried a bunch of tracks. And he had one on the Holy Ghost. Handed over to this fella. And he looked at him and he said, Brother Eccles, he said, I know all about it. He said, I used to have it. I'm back. I backslid. He put his hand on him. He said, stop the car. He stopped. He said, what do you want? He said, I'm getting out. He said, I won't ride with a backslider. He said, judgments of God can fall on you anytime. You're subject to be killed anytime by the devil. He said, I don't want to be with you when it happens. The man repented and got right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right in the middle of the storm, the old ark was floating. I don't know. Some of the kids may have said, Dad, you reckon we're going to make it? He said, that water said, it's really hitting against this old boat. He said, she's rocking and riding high. He said, don't worry. He said, I built it just like God said build it. Hey Amen. I didn't let anybody in here. It wasn't supposed to be in here. They all had one name, Noah. There's Noah's family. One name. And he said, the doors. Don't worry about the door. He said, I built it like he said, built it, and he shut it himself. And he didn't need a latch. When God shuts the door, it'll stay shut without a latch. Hey Amen. And so the old ship rode the storm for 150 days and finally landed. And the beautiful thing about this storm, Noah and all of his family walked out together in their right mind. A lot of people don't get out of this storm in their right mind. I was talking to a young lady the other day that had tried to commit suicide. Very nice looking young lady. She is born out of wedlock. And she grew up resenting all of that. And at an early age got on drugs. And threw her life away. And I hadn't met her since she was a child when she sat down in the chair I looked at her and I, I said this is a little blunt but I asked you a point blank question why do you hate yourself she said well I don't know but I do and just about everybody else I said why do you hate yourself you didn't have a thing in the world to do with coming into this world you didn't have a thing in the world to do with what happened in your childhood. But you do have something to do with yourself. You're an individual. You're a free moral agent. you got a will. And your yesterdays may have been bad. And your today may be bad. But I can assure you of one thing. You can change tomorrow. She come alive. She hugged her mother. Tears in her eyes. I'm expecting to hear. Praise the Lord. But some people don't come out of their storm with their right mind. Drugs have warped it. Sin has paralyzed them. They can't think right. What is the thinking of these drug minds 
that'll drive down the street and shoot innocent people they don't even know. I wonder have they ever heard the song he was some mother's darling. Some mother's son. Can they comprehend mom and dad and brothers and sisters around a coffin? I wonder if they've ever been to a funeral. Weeping their hearts out. Their minds is all crooked, destroyed, perverted. Until they think to make yourself a name, you've got to start shooting people. Well, you make yourself a name, all right. And it's you behind those gray walls in Angola facing the electric chair. I've been down and looked it over. It's a sad thing. I looked at those gray high walls around that penitentiary. I looked at all the little buildings on top of the wall. All along, about every few hundred yards. I said, what's that? I said, there's a man up in that with a machine gun. Prisoners. Prisoners. Walking in this life. I said to the young lady, the greatest gift that anybody ha could have is life. And I said, here you are in your 20s. And there's a lot of old women out there, 85, that's millionaires and living in castles. And they'd give you their millions and their castle if you could swap your youth to them. And they could be young one more time. They'd say, I know how to make money, but I can't ever be young again. I said, here you are a millionaire. With two good eyes, two good ears, arms and legs, walk, still make a decision. You're a millionaire and don't know it. We all are. We all got so much. If you don't have a dime in your pocket, if you're alive and you're feeling all right, you're rich. After the storm, after the storm, then in Genesis 9 and 8, we're coming to a close in just a little bit. Genesis 9 and 8. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, I behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowls, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, and I'll establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the water of a flood, neither shall there be any more a flood to destroy all the earth. And God said there is a token of the covenant. Thank God. You know, if he hadn't given them this, every time it'd come a big rain, they'd have wondered. I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations, I do set my bow in the cloud. And I shall be, it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass that when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the heavens. Amen. My last thought. After the storm, God put his rainbow of hope in the sky. Well, I appreciate that one. I look at it often. But there's another rainbow. Jesus is our rainbow of hope. And God made a covenant 
If I'd repent of my sins and be baptized in his name and fill with the Holy Ghost and live a holy life, he made a covenant. I'll be your rainbow. And you'll never be destroyed. You'll never be destroyed. No floods will ever come. No fire will ever come because I'm your rainbow of hope. Amen, amen. Oh, he's my hiding place tonight. He's my covet. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. He's my strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and he's safe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I got a feeling tonight somebody here needs. To fix things before your storm comes. You know why Elijah made it through his storm? He had it fixed before it hit. And he walked through it. You know why the young prophet didn't? He didn't fix it forever and settle it in his mind. This is God's word. It'll never change. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never change. I'm sticking with the word. I don't care who says they're a prophet. I'm sticking with the word. Before the storm, before the black clouds settle, before the pain goes shooting through your heart, that's the time to fix it up. Fix it up. Work while it's day, for night's coming when you can't fix it then. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of folks that could have went through this storm had they had the Holy Ghost. But they fooled around. They didn't have the power to go through. He's offering it to you tonight free of charge. Before the storm, build the ark. Before the storm, get in the church. Because this church is built on a rock. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The door is open. And somebody here tonight needs to make hay while the sun's shining. You need to fix it now. Because when the dark cloud of the death angel settle down on the rich man, the pencil dropped from his hand. Head to his chest. His breathing stopped. He probably tried to reach for the chair or the desk as he felt himself sinking into the dark dungeon below. But he didn't fix it. His faith and hopes were all in his wealth. And the last words the angel of death said, And tomorrow whose things shall these things be? They won't be your barns. Those that are left there. And the money that you have that you was going to build them out of won't be yours in just a few moments. Too late now. Too late to fix it. It's all over. It's all over. Somebody needs to fix something before your storm. Now. Fix it before your storm is coming. And the only way you'll get through it is by putting your hand in the hand of Jesus tonight. I wonder if you'd quietly stand and you would step out and start this way in Jesus' name. I release you from fear. 
I release you from doubts. I release you from procrastination. Because tonight is the night for you to make it through your storm that's coming. Amen. Sometimes it's so quick. People has no time to repent. As they sing, who's coming else? Who else is coming? Somebody needs to come. Before the storm, in the storm, and after the storm. Only the born again can go through the first and the second one and the third one and come out shouting. He can see you through. Sing it, brother. Somebody else is coming. In Jesus' name. Somebody else.